Hello and welcome to Toneless Painting with M. Francis McCarthy. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and welcome as well to volume two of 25 Days of Tonalism, day two. The study that I have um, done today is uh, painted after Elliot Dangerfield. It's called Country Road at Sunset. and. Um, I quite like the original painting I uh, by Elliot Dangerfield. I will have to say I'm not usually a huge fan of Elliot, but uh, um, I quite like this painting, and I really like how he struck a certain kind of color tone throughout the painting and, and, and stuck with it, and uh, I found that pretty inspirational and sort of have um, kind of pivoted. I did this painting, oh my goodness, maybe four or five months ago, so or I did most of it four or five months ago. Um, and I have, uh, it, is, it has been an influence on uh, a couple of my own paintings I've done. Um, not that they had the same composition, but um, I'm, I like the kind of muted, uh, sort of almost monochromatic approach uh, with some, you know, slight variations. Now, this is my third attempt at the audio on this video today. I've been having technical issues, so forgive me if I'm a little um, buzzing here, you know. Don't know what happened with the last one. Uh, it wasn't until it got to the end of the uh, the video where it's normally going to save itself that I discovered that it's just pooped out. Anyway, um, I do have a uh, little biographical information for you on old Elliot here. Um, and this is off of Wikipedia. Elliot Dangerfield, 1859 to 1932, was an American artist who lived and worked in North Carolina. He is considered one of North Carolina's most prolific artists. Elliot, the son of a captain in the Confederate Army, was born in Harpers Ferry, West Virginia, and raised in North Carolina. At 21, he moved to New York to study art. In 1884, Dangerfield met George Aness, the works of Aness and others inspired his visionary style. Now I'm going to leave it there because I uh, really consider um, Elliot Dangerfield to be sort of a satellite of George Ness, and I am not absolutely positive but I believe he wrote a book about uh, George Ness and um, I wish I had been Elliot Dangerfield. I would have loved to work with George Ness too and seen him uh, you know, paint and uh, how he went after things, but uh, he was lucky and uh, the rest of us, well, you know, it's, what's great about the modern age is that uh, you don't have to rely on anyone to see how uh, I personally approach painting. All you have to do is go to YouTube and it doesn't cost you anything to uh, watch me make painting after painting after painting. And so um, that's uh, something that we didn't have the advantage of uh, back in the late 1800s, and I know many other uh, artists that are very interested in tonalism that are quite hungry for information about how George Ness and uh, people like John Francis Murphy and Charles Warren Eaton worked, and there's precious little information about that. There's a little bit of information in the um, biography that George Ness uh, Jr. wrote about uh, his father, George Ness. Um, but uh, really what you get from that is that uh, George Ness kind of just would do whatever he can, whatever he could to get the thing across. And sometimes his paintings would end up quite dark and, 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 and quite bad at times too. But uh, uh, I do think uh, I've read some quotes from Elliot uh, that, uh, you know, um, as far as uh, George Ness as a teacher wasn't, wasn't the most awesome teacher because um, he, well, he had a, a, a lot of different ways of working and was very much fueled by inspiration, of course, tempered by his many years of experience, so he was knowledgeable too, but, you know, I can, speaking as an artist, uh, you know, in their 50s now, who's been doing art my whole life, I can tell you that you do pieces that are high watermarks, and then, um, you know, you move on with your life, and uh, you won't you won't necessarily have an ability to do those pieces again. I mean, because you're a different person, everything changes. So, uh, hopefully, your work is constantly getting better.
but um, I have seen cases where people have, uh, you know, worked in retrograde. They, uh, their work has gotten worse. And one example of that is actually Charles Warren Eaton, who was one of the greatest tonalist painters of, uh, of all time. Um, I believe he took a break from painting of about 20 years and then got back into it. And if you look at that stuff, you just go, oh my God, what happened? You know, you lost the plot, Charles. But the world had moved on as well. The, uh, the world had moved on from enjoying and admiring the uh, low-key, sort of uh, somber, tonalist approach and into uh, God knows what, really, modernism, impressionism, the Ashcan school, whatever you, whatever you want to call it, you know, it moved on. And uh, sometimes as an artist, you, you know, you really feel you want to uh, move on uh, with the world as well. But I don't know. I am, I'm a uh, modern artist who's working in a, uh, an old mode. And uh, this is my personal response to art history because there's a lot of very great things that, while they were acknowledged as great uh, at the time they were done, um, other movements came along and supplanted them, and uh, they were thrown out, and nobody cares, and nobody ever went back to say, wait a minute, this was actually really amazing, really fantastic. How come there was a lot more fuel here, there was a lot more work that could have been done in this mode, um, and yet, uh, people moved on, they moved away from it, and uh, forgot about it. And so, when I came across uh, tonalism, um, I knew I would have to, uh, to work in that mode, uh, because it touched me uh, very deeply uh, to the core of my uh, being as an artist. Now, speaking of that, uh, today is Saturday, uh, May 27th. I'm in the studio today, and uh, I've been painting this morning, and um, I'm home for lunch. Uh, I was working on a, um, a, a very vertical scene, it's actually a 12 by 16 vertical, which is a little uh, taller and skinnier than I usually like to do my verticals, but uh, it's this river scene with this really kind of glowing... Uh, somber sky with a lot of reds and clay tones in it and uh, I'm pretty happy with uh, what's going on it's a second pass I was doing today so and actually breaking with um, a lot of my recent uh, uh, pattern with the um, the burnt umber uh, ground I have uh, actually done a lot, I did a lot of glazing today on this piece and um, both with yellow tones, a little bit of black, I actually glazed with a bit of purple, uh, which I adulterated with some uh, raw umber, uh, because the, you know, the, um, the purple pigment that I use, is, which is the uh, dioxine uh, purple, is really um, intense and um, artificial looking, so it's almost always got to be modified in some way. Um, that said, it's a brilliant color, I use it all the time. Um, so that piece is uh, second pass, looking pretty good, uh, no complaints really. Um, eh, well, yeah, I'm actually fairly happy with it. You know, it's not suffering from uh, the uh, the stiffness problem, which is the uh, one of the many ways that I can fail uh, and uh, that uh, can crop up. Um, especially that happens when you overwork things; things get really stiff and. Uh, the, the absolute best thing is when the painting looks really fresh and uh, um, and is yet yeah, contains all of the elements necessary uh, for it to be a really nice looking painting you know good color good composition uh, nice brush handling uh, good texture you know nice uh, painting surface all of these factors add up to a, a nice painting and I think this painting is going to be pretty good uh, I don't know if it'll make it into the museum show that I've got coming up, but uh, it might, I hope so, I'm, you know, I'm trying to do as many uh, paintings as I can for that. Uh, so I am going to be, I'm home for lunch right now, we'll be headed back to the studio, and uh, I'm thinking I might just jump into a first pass on a 14 by 14, so which would be kind of ambitious. Um, we'll see. 
let's see, I may end up doing another uh, one of the uh, 25 days. Uh, I'm working on 25 days of Tunnels and Volume 3 in the studio where I have odd moments. We'll, we'll have to see. Um, I rely a lot on my intuition and energy level. Um, anyway, hey, uh, those of you following my videos here, I have created a bunch of playlists, uh, some of them based on artists, some of them based on like uh, the 100 Days of Tonalism. I have yet to do one for the last 25 Days of Tonalism project that we completed, but I will be getting to that. Also, I have put some more work up on Sachi, um, so go check that out. There will be a link underneath this video um, that will take you to that page. And, um, you know, if you like my work, you can uh, go to my website as well, which is landscapepainter.co.nz. You can follow the blog through there. On the blog, there's a higher resolution image of this painting, as well as a couple detail images and a uh, photo of the original that I used as reference. So go check that out. And um, I'll be back tomorrow with one of my paintings, and one I'm really excited to present to you. Uh, so meanwhile, take good care and stay out of trouble.